everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Jason H. Raz, your class instructor for today. So today, we will learn what management science is all about and its application to business. So at the end of this lesson, you'll be able to first get acquainted with management science and its application to business management. And of course, relate management science to the accounting course, your course. Understand the basics of the scientific method approach and finally apply the scientific method approach to business situations. So, if you're ready, let's start. So, what is management science? How does management science relate to business? How does science help businesses and organizations resolve their problem? Well, According to Bernard Taylor, 2013, management science is a scientific approach to solving management problems. It encompasses a number of mathematically oriented techniques and the logical approach to problem solving. So, management science helps businesses and organizations resolve their problem through a scientific approach. Also, Management science can be used in a variety of organizations to solve many different types of problems. So management science can be applied to a profit-oriented business or a charitable business or in any type of organization. It can also be used to a different types of problems, be it for financial problem or management problem or operational problem, management science can be of great help. Management science is also referred to as operations research, quantitative methods, quantitative analysis, and decision sciences. At this point, you might be asking, why do we need to study management science? How does management science relate to my course, accounting? Well, this management science and management science is a discipline whose application to resolving business problems is of great significance and this is accounting accounting on the other hand provides financial information that are useful in decision making so management science and accounting are actually related since accounting provides financial information that are useful in decision making that could help the stakeholders the decision makers in making their decision meanwhile management science is a discipline an application of science to solving management problems so the, there is an interrelationship between accounting and management science they could go together. For example, let us say there was a problem in operation. Let's say there was an overstocking of inventory. Accounting could provide inventory records, while management science can help resolve the problem. Or, for example, there was an excess funds, and the management would like to know how to earn more investment. So accounting can provide information about the cash flow while management science can come in to help the management decide in what investment type could it invest the excess money. So there is really an interrelationship between management science and accounting. So here are the tools and techniques in management science. First, in this course, we will discuss the break-even analysis. Later on, we'll discuss what break-even analysis is. We also have linear programming, forecasting, queuing theory, and a whole lot more. There is a lot more of tools and techniques in management science that are waiting to be explored and discovered. So I hope you'll be eager and excited to learn a lot from this subject and to apply these tools and techniques in a real-life situation. 
So now let's discuss the scientific method approach that is used in management science. How is it done? The scientific method approach is a five-step process in resolving management problems or any types of problems. And we must undergo through this process to achieve our desired resolutions to problems. The first step in this approach is observation. In observation, we must understand first what the situation is all about. Of course, you cannot give answers or recommend solutions to a problem wherein you do not understand what the problem is all about, right? So you must first understand what the situation is all about by observing. After you observe, the next step is to define the problem. What the problem is all about? And what do we need to achieve? Setting of objectives. After you observe and define the problem, the next crucial step is to construct a model. In model construction, we must create an abstract mathematical representation of a problem. We must translate this problem to a mathematical or logical way. We must know what are the variables involved. Okay, so this step is very crucial because it might be, you might miss something that is crucial to the problem. So again, you must be very careful in model construction. After you have constructed a model or a mathematical representation, the next step is to solution. This is the logical resolve to the problem. Okay, so if we have the model, then we can resolve not a problem. And then the last step is, of course, implement. Implement the solution to the problem. This is the execution of the solution. However, take note that the model construction and solutions are very crucial step in the uh, in this approach because there might be some points or some variables that you, that you might miss. So, if for example, if the model if the model does not work for the problem, then you must go again, go back to problem definition. Or if the solution is not correct, or if the solution doesn't actually resolve the problem, then you go back to problem definition. Okay, so that's why this is uh, the model construction and the solution part is very crucial steps in scientific method approach. Let's try this. David decided to put up a business to be called David's Rice, a rice retailing business in his hometown. He canvassed from local farmers and suppliers and got a very affordable bargain of 1,800 pesos per sack of 50 kilogram rice. Apart from the cost of purchase, David has to shoulder the freight of 5 pesos per sack to deliver the purchase into his store. David is however frustrated in calculating how much should be the price per sack and per kilo given that he wants to earn a net of 1,100 pesos per sack of rice. He also wants to make a simulation of any possible scenario. Can we help David resolve his problem? How? To answer David's problem, we will need to apply the scientific method approach and to guide you, ask yourself these questions. What is the situation is all about? David is new to business and he is frustrated in calculating the price per sack and per kilo. What is David's problem? What do we want to achieve? We need a formula to compute the price per sack 
and per kilo. This is the problem of David. How to compute the price per sack and per kilo. What equation can be designed? What are the variables? What are the given data? We need to have a simple linear equation with the following variables. First, we have the cost of rice per sack, and that is 1,800. We also have the freight charge per sack, 5 pesos. And of course, David's target profit per sack is 1,100 pesos. These are the variables. In business, to compute the profit, we need to have the cost per sack deducted from the price per sack. This is the basic formula in business when computing the profit. However, since we have a freight charge, we need to add the freight charge to the cost of purchase per sack to get the total cost. Therefore, we can expand this into price per sack less the cost per sack plus the freight charge equals the profit. After we have translated David's problem into a logical way, we will need to assign these variables a coefficient. So we can let A as the price, B as the cost per sack, C as the freight charge, and D as the profit. Then by substitution, our long version of David's problem can be now translated into A minus open parenthesis B plus C close parenthesis equals to D. Now we will substitute the given values of the problem. So from our equation A minus B plus C equals D, we will now have A, uh, open parenthesis, 1,800, this is the cost per sack of rice, plus the 5 pesos freight charge equals the target profit of 1,100. Then we will have A minus 1,805 is equal to 1,100. Now we will transpose the 1,805 to the other side. So we will get A equals to 1,100 plus 1,805. So A is 2,905 per sack. So this is now the price per sack. We have now the price per sack. And we have answered David's problem. If A, or the price, is 2,900 per sack, and if a sack of rice contains 50 kilograms, then the price per kilogram will be computed as 2,805 per sack divided by 50 kilograms. Therefore, the price per kilogram is 58 pesos and 10 centavos. So we have now answered David's two problems, the price per sack and the price per kilo. But we are not done yet with the five-step process of scientific method approach. The next step is solution. Is the equation design credible? Can it be used in other scenarios? How do we know if it is correct? How do we know if we have achieved our desired equation? And how do we know if the price per sack per and per kilo we have computed are actually correct? So let's check. Let's check. So if the price per sack minus cost per sack is equal to profit, 
and then our price per sack is 200, 2,105 less 1,800 cost per sack of rice and the freight charge of 5 pesos is equal to a profit of 1,100. Okay, so yes, we have arrived the correct price per sack. So after we have checked and verified that our solution is actually correct, now the last step of the scientific method approach is to implement. Apply the equation to David's problem. So I hope you learned a lot from this discussion today. And I hope you will learn a lot more in our next discussion, our next discussion videos. So thank you for watching.